guys welcome back to my channel the ink to reader today i am filming these in two parts because i need to head out but i wanted to film the small small bit at the beginning um but i am doing my march tbr i've done a whole video on january explaining that this year i'm doing a shelf tbr so each month i'm going to choose a random number and then from the one of my shelves is going to come up and i have to read all the books on that shelf there are a couple of rules here and there but i'm not going to be too repetitive in this video so you can check out that video um and i might just mention them while i go through the books i've done two shelves so far of course it's march third month of the year duh uh, and it's time for me to pick a new shelf and let's see because march is a very long month uh either i don't have any um, holiday and annual leave so I'm working full time but hopefully I can come in a lot of reading when I'm done working so we are still here where I don't remember how to record my phone screen and also uh, I'm still using my old phone which is very broken but I've got 21 shelves that I can choose from so I'm going to insert these hopefully you can see that and then I'm gonna click on generate well I should try and click on it so you can see before me which shelf is it is it shelf number 12 okay let me check which shelf is it it's just the gray books i'm going to show you in a second the shelf and going through the books if you've seen these in the last couple of months you know what's happening right now okay so here we have the shelf number 12 um and these are as i said mostly my gray books is another shelf that it's actually not too bad in the sense that I've read many. Yeah, I'm gonna show you in a second, but first I got Baron Samedi. I love him so much. And this is just Thor Hammer. Um, I think I got it in a um, like nerdy subscription box I used to have like ages ago. So yeah, okay. We have, first of all, um, a novella which is elixir this is 3.5 um, in a series by jennifer l armentrow that i read the first book in january but i'm not up to this point so i need, don't need to read these yeah let's say that i'm gonna fix this later so i'm gonna go back 12 nights at rotter house i've already read these and love these <laughs> you can find it in my horror wrap up i did a challenge in 2021 when i was reading horror books and then we have dark dawn by jerry christoph which is the last book in the never night trilogy i've read these i don't need to read these and same goes for these veloni i have read these and actually enjoyed it enough it was a bit weird but um didn't mind at all blameless which is book number three and i have to read this one because i was up to this point in the series so i'm gonna read blameless and I'm actually looking forward to that because um, the because the second book ended up in a cliffhanger, and then I got Soulless, which I have read as part of the same series, book number two, Wildcat. This is book number one in a fantasy series, and I've read Wildcat, so I don't need to read these. But uh, the author very kindly sent me this book, and the second and third one as well. I read the first and the second one, really, really enjoyed, especially this first one. Um, so I would definitely recommend. It's a military fantasy, I would say. And then we have book number two, uh, Changeless. Uh, so I've read these, of course, because I'm reading number three. And this ended up in a big, big cliffhanger. So looking forward to continue on, as I said. Let me take off the armor. Then I have Asking for It by Louise O'Neill. And I've not read these so this is finally getting read i think i found that in a charity shop ages ago and another one that i meant to read for ages was bone shaker by cherry priest i think i've read other stuff by the same author and i really enjoyed them if i remember correctly if it's the same author so looking forward to this plus i mean can we appreciate this cover and this is another fantasy steampunk then we have a Court of Silver Flames, and I've read this one, so this is kind of book number four in A Court of Thorn and Roses. So, yeah, 
and then we have the darkest powers of Tolkien which I have not read and this is kind of like an anthology but I'm actually going to read these and go through it and there is a whole series on anthologies based on the world of Tolkien and you know Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit world I've seen the books around in bookshops and so on this was the one that because it's dark powers of course appealed me the most and I have before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. This is book number two in, is it the first Law trilogy? Which is not even a trilogy because it's like made of other series as well. But I've not read these and I've read the first one. So I'm up to this point and this is going to get read. Then we have Fight Club. I've clearly read these. <laughs> and another book that I have not read is Hades Daughter by Sarah Douglas. I think I purchased this ages ago and when I was in a kick about Greek mythology, I mean I love Greek mythology, any kind of mythology, but Greek mythology in particular, a Nordic one. So I think this is, it's definitely a fantasy, but I think there is probably a heavy side on romance, which I don't mind. Uh, so well, let's see, I'm going to read through the synopsis later, the rest of the video, but yeah, mm -hmm. this is a chunk of book and it's getting read finally part of a series and then we have four seconds to lose which is part of a contemporary new adult series by Kei Taka I love her um, in terms of I don't read many romans but when I do it's usually one of hers and this is book number three I think in that series I've already read these and then finally I have visions which is book number two in this kind of paranormal fantasy paranormal series um, I, I remember it was paranormal but it's been ages since I've read the first one and I never continue on but I definitely wanted to so I purchased the second book and now it's time for me to continue on day two Hi guys! Sorry, uh, there was a change of scenery. It's actually a couple of days after you saw me um, at the beginning of the video and I just came home from a training for work and I wanted to film these because the other day I ran out of time, I had to go and I had to come downstairs and film in the guest bedroom. It's just temporary again. I'm also filming now from my phone, uh, the new phone, so let me know how, how whether I am. Again, I keep saying this but it's actually finger crossed it really happening that my birthday is in a few days so I'm gonna get a camera but yeah I'm just filming from another phone and another area of the house so I'm gonna run through again the books that you just saw in the bookshelf and give you a bit of synopsis and at the end I'm gonna insert my TBR that's concerning the graphic content the first thing I have here is The Dark Powers of Tolkien. As I said, this is just an anthology about the um, world of the Lord of the Rings. Um, is it Middle Earth? It's called? I think it's called that. It's just an anthology speaking about the uh, dark powers that are present in the trilogy and in The Hobbit, I guess. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through these. And I really like usually these kind of books, the kind of coffee table anthology books. And if I do really, really like these, I can purchase other anthologies in the same series that I've seen going around. I went to Waterstone recently and yeah, I've seen them around. So that's happening. Um, I have also here Blameless. Blameless is part of, I think, five books series with a companion series also. And this is, as I said, book number three. And in the first book, you follow Alexia. Alexia, she is kind of like a noble woman, like she's coming from a well-off family. And she has supernatural powers in the sense that in this world, there are um, werewolves, vampires, and so forth. Then they are very much integrated into society. And her power, though, is that she vacates their uh, abilities when she's around them. So I don't know if she has to touch them or if she just has to be around them. But basically, when she is in their presence or touches them, they lose all their supernatural power and they're just humans. And this is her power. She's not married yet. And then in the first book, there is a lot of interest that comes into play. And he's a supernatural creature. And I don't want to say anything else. But the second book ended in a cliffhanger, so I'm curious to see what happens in these. Then I have got Visions. Visions is the second book. I think this is a paranormal fantasy, but I'm, it might just be a thriller. 
Uh, I don't remember, honestly, the only thing I remember from the first book, which is called Omens, it's that basically we follow our protagonist, that she is the daughter of two serial killers, and she's adopted then, and years past, something happens to her adoptive family, and she has to make her way back to her hometown, where her parents were born or raised, and find out the past of her parents, and what's going on in this city. I got this idea in my mind that there was some paranormal element, but it's been honestly probably five, six years since I've read the first book and I really enjoyed that. It was definitely a fresh story and back then I was reading a lot of the genre of fantasy and so on and this kind of stood out to me. So I wanted to continue on and plus serial killers, I love true crime and all of that stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna continue on with the second book. Another second book in a series is before they are hanged by Joe Bercombe. This is a very popular series. It's the first law trilogy, uh, I believe it's called. And can we appreciate this cover? First of all, this is amazing. Um, the first book is The Blade Itself, which I've read last year. And in the first book, you basically follow three to four characters that I remember exactly. And not much happens in the first book, it's true. However, we have these four characters that you follow and this war at the moment is a peace but there is like a war or conflict brimming it's basically the fascinating part there was that parts of those characters that you follow are grey to actually villain characters although I didn't love the first book I was definitely intrigued to see how some of those characters would develop and without giving, giving any spoilers about how the story is potentially intertwined and what happens next. It's very difficult for me to give you more about the plot and this world because, again, not much happened, but it's more a character-driven story, at least it was in the first book, and I want to see if actually the plot picks up in the second and third one. I mean, people love this trilogy, so there must be a reason in the first book, again, I do love his writing. Uh, he usually writes green dark fantasy, which is definitely my cup of tea. So yeah, looking forward to continue on. Then I've got Bone Shaker, and this is, I think it's the start of a new series, and it's a steampunk fantasy series. And the premise of this is that you follow our protagonist, I don't know if it's a he or a she, whether. So our protagonist, she has, I'm gonna call her she just for the sake of it. So she anyway, she has to clear up her father's name after he was a scientist, her father, and created this kind of weapon, the bone shaker, that actually went and destroyed Seattle in the sense that it released a gas that turned everybody who breathed the gas into living dead. And the city then had to be abandoned, left to the undead or living dead by the zombies. So now she wants to go back to the city, find out what actually happened and trying to clear her father's name. Potentially the story is not as been told. But I don't remember how I came to pick this up, but I think it was highly recommended by someone. And I've not read a steampunk story in ages, so it's time. Then I have got Asking for It. I don't I don't know what this is if this is a literal fiction. I don't know, is this a dystopian? I have literally no idea. I heard of these ages ages ago and found these in a charity shop in literally perfect condition so I picked it up and I think this is about this popular girl that was just doing everything right, she had the perfect life or apparently so and then one day um, some pics of her, some intimate pictures of her emerge or she does something that then she's branded as a slut and seen as suddenly like someone who's been ruined and it touches upon very very important topic just from the synopsis i can tell and whatever genre this sits in i'm looking forward to delve into it and see how the conversation which is a conversation that's very much relevant it doesn't matter if this is an old book old meaning they are a few years old um it's treated and handled so yeah looking forward to these i really like this cover although it, it makes me sad just looking at it the next one i'm actually very much looking forward to it however it could end up being a mess or it could end up being very amazing like i'm really hoping it's gonna be the la latter one um this is Hades Daughter by Sarah Douglas and it's book number one in the Troy game. I have never heard of these on booktube. I think I found these, I don't know, I was probably looking at websites and looking back then I was reading fantasy with a lot of romance elements. And by reading the synopsis of these, I think there's definitely gonna be a romance element, but I don't think it's what the whole thing is based upon and it seems like this you follow basically the descendant of Ariadne and Ariadne she had been spurned by Theseus because she had given him only a daughter instead of a son and 
basically she had swear the revenge. However, from the synopsis, it seems that our protagonist is, yes, one of the descendants of Ariadne that she's still probably holding a grudge, apparently. But also you follow another man and his name is Brutus and he was kind of, it's kind of like a king, but probably because he comes from Troy, who was destroyed, he's not as well off as it was meant to be so he's looking for his fortune again and there is this legend of his labyrinth that you would go through and you get powers out of them kind of that's the only way humans could get supernatural powers i guess so yeah you got basically an out of luck potential king descendant of from people that come from troy and his love or his woman at the beginning of the book i guess it's basically descendant of ariadne and she wants a revenge or you know for how her great grandma was offended by Theseus. I, I I honestly it sounds like it's such a complicated long synopsis if you read inside. Once I've read it, I could probably tell you way more and be more clear of what this is about. But it sounds amazing. I love Greek mythology as I said, so it's time for me to conquer this beast and hopefully love it. And it's a series, so Hopefully I'd really love it. So that makes seven books, but actually I need to purchase this other book here, which is our, basically I've got a book club that I, yes, I used to have a book club with my company. I left the company, but four of us that left the same company. So we all worked for that company and now we all have left. We decided to um, kind of keep the book club ongoing between us. And this book is the next book we have to read for the beginning of April. So I'm going to try and make my way through these. I don't know much about these, about that it's a very new release, if not 22 release. And it's basically following different characters that have gone through a pandemic. I don't know if it has any similarities with COVID or it's a completely different illness. But anyway, there was an illness and you follow different characters in the aftermath. And it sounded like a sci-fi, but also a literature fiction. So maybe it's a mashup of those two genres. I don't know. I've just literally heard one of us talking about it briefly and we decided to pick it up. So I'm going to read it and hopefully give you a better synopsis, which will make eight books. I might have one or two left over from February as well. I don't know yet because it's like a week before the month end. Um, I'm away the last weekend of the month, so I need to pray on this. And also there's going to be the fairy loot for February, which again, I don't have the title now, it's not in my hands as of now. So at that point we get to nine books. And finally, I do want to read um, House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas, which is so big. Um, I got the special Waterloo, Waterloo, Waterloo edition, but honestly, I don't know what's so special about that. Like, there's nothing special. Like, yes, you got this beautiful end pages, but the book itself is like normal. You got this, you got this, then you got the, a normal book. I was expecting at least colored spread pages. No luck with that. This is the second book in the Crescent. Series by Sarah J Maas, which is a new adult fantasy, urban fantasy series by her. I mean, you've heard about this a million times, so I'm not going to give you a synopsis in here. I will make sure to do it in the wrap-up. I don't want to be here for too long. So yeah, I'm going to try and read this chunk of book, but I've read the first book in like four days and it was as big as this, almost. So yeah, I should be able to do it. And then we get to 10 books like this. I mean, I'm not aiming necessarily to have always 10 books, but um, it just happens to be seven books from my shelves and other three that I have to or want to read anyway. Okay, so the graphic novels. So usually I said that I was going to pick at least three graphic novels. Now this month, I don't know, I want to just go all out there and I have actually decided to pick one, two, three, four and five. So I'm going to have five of my official TBR. The first one, which is the most recently published one, I believe, it's Fangs, and this is a small graphic novel all in black and white, and all I know about this has been going around during October 2021, is that it's basically a love story between a vampire and a werewolf, and it's very quiet, everyday living, for what I gathered. I love the aesthetic of these, and everybody's been loving this, but it's not going to be like explosive super fantasy, it's just going to be like slice of life in the life of a vampire and a werewolf that are in love. In terms of manga, I'm going to pick up Norigami, um, Stray God, volume number one. I, I don't know, I acquired this ages, honestly, ages ago. And it's the story of this 
god that doesn't have a shrine so he decided that he needs money to build himself a shrine and have more followers and he accepts every kind of favor from small favor like helping a kid who's been bullied to retrieve a kitten in order to get the money to build his shrine i don't know why i purchased these it's not i mean it's something that could be very much a hit and miss because i think it's going to be like a lengthy series and i i don't know with manga i'm very peculiar what I choose to keep going on with because they're very expensive so I think I can recommend it by someone and I just wanted to give it a try and see I know that with manga you always always have to kind of continue on for a few volumes but just if you have if you know Norigami or if you watch even the anime because sometimes they're very similar and you can tell me you know just go past the first volume even if you like it sometimes I like it but it's like ah oh, do I want to purchase all the other volumes and sometimes I say no but let me know if you liked it if you would recommend me continue on for definitely more than one volume at least and the other that I'm definitely continuing on is still in this wrap I'm gonna do a haul soon and I'm gonna unwrap it then oh it's a bit damaged oh Amazon should I get mad oh hopefully it's just this anyway I'm getting distracted Berserk number two the uh, compendium deluxe edition so this is volume four to six i've been making my way through the first volume and i well you guys see in my wrap up but i want to continue on and berserk is a grim dark fantasy you follow this guy he is on a path of revenge after something horrible happened to him and he now kind of chasing these demons around the world and he's got this massive sword and I mean massive it's bigger than him and it's quite big and it's very brutal been loving it so far it's yeah I love this kind of green dark violent manga or graphic novels of fantasy so yeah then I am continuing on and reading Why the Last Man, which is the again deluxe edition or compendium or whatever you want to call it, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, this is number four in a five compendiums um, graphic novel series. This is done by Brian K. Vaughan, who did Saga. That's how I initially came about to know about. Uh, why the last man it also came very much recommended and the basic premise of this graphic novel is that you've got this virus that wipes out all male mammals from earth and yes humans too so there are only women left apart from our main protagonist so yes as the title suggests our protagonist is the last man on earth last mammals on earth I think him and his monkey, because his monkey also survived and he was a male monkey, I think, if I remember correctly. So got this volume and then the last volume to go, but I need to purchase that. And finally, I wanted something, I don't know, I looked at this on my shelf and was like, ah, it's been ages since I read one of these. I pick those up randomly sometimes in these are Adventure Time, volume 5. In this case, I have to read and I, it's just, it's Adventure Time in a comic. And it's just like a warm, cozy adventure. Like I love the color palette and everything. I have never watched actually the cartoon. Like I'm not someone who watches cartoon apart from Rick and Morty, probably. And I definitely, definitely will love this um, format of digesting adventure time as a story. So yeah, continuing on with this beloved, beloved graphic novel series i think i like 17 volumes out or something and i've just got up to this point but i will eventually continue on it's just something that's cozy and think you know maybe after reading these maybe you want to read something like these if it makes sense but yes guys that's it thank you so much for watching i hope you have a lovely day night let me know what you are picking up for march if you have anything you're particularly excited about and i'll see you next time take care of yourself ciao